people look at glass and think that's what they drink out of or what their car windshield is. When I first started working with glass, people would say to me, well, you can't do that. And I would say, well, why not? <laughs> you hear you're taking this material and you're sort of forcing it into a shape that it's not really want to be in. And then all of a sudden it comes out and it's got this other magical property. It's the way the light is absorbed into, into it. And it doesn't matter what time of day it is and how much light there is. And that's a really great thing because it means it's constantly changing. I was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1949. My dad was a carpenter and I uh, went to an industrial arts high school and had four years of machine shop, four years of architectural drafting, four years of pattern making. So I, I had all those skills. I learned all those skills. Okay, so what we're going to have then is we're going to have an image, mm -hmm. an image, an image, okay, okay. an image, and an image. And I can do that And if you give me, like, give me a drawing with a grid. Sure. I think that's maybe the best way to do it. Okay. You know? Mm-hmm. So you're just kind of getting some layers. Okay. My thinking that I'm going to uh, have a career as an artist was fairly late. I had done a number of different okay. things, um, and I was yeah. actually getting a degree in biology at Portland State University in Portland, Oregon, and, start, and taking art classes at the same time. And so I was 28. Once I decided that, what I really wanted to do was pursue uh, learning more about being an artist, taking more classes. Going beyond undergraduate school, I uh, decided to come to RISD to run School of Design. One night, I uh, was walking on campus and I saw this sort of glow in the distance. And it was sort of odd because it was this yellowish mass that, that was moving around sort of on the other side of this field. So I walked over there and there was a glass studio there. It was actually one of the earliest ones in the country. It was started in the 60s by the fellow that ran the ceramics department. And I had never seen glass blowing. I didn't know anything about it. So I knocked on the door. Part of the studio was sort of outdoors behind a fence. I knocked on the door. I said, what do you guys do here? And they said, well, here's what we do. And they showed me. And I thought, well, this is kind of cool. So I started hanging out. One day I just looked into the furnace and I thought, you know, this is a metal. It's a liquid. It can be poured, just like any metal. And so then that led me to, to then spending time trying to create objects out of other materials like wood that, that I could transform into glass through this idea of pouring the glass or casting. And because I had had all this background in foundry practices in high school, it was a very easy sort of mix. Drawing is the first realization of taking an idea and a feeling, because for me, art isn't just about an intellectual process. Art make process is mind, body, soul if you want, intuition if you want, combining them, start to draw, take the drawing. Now it's come out of me and exists in real time in a real space. Those drawings are then taken by my assistants and turned into templates make uh, styrofoam patterns from those templates. Uh, we often make uh, resin bonded sand molds from those patterns. So you have patterns as a positive that are encased in a sand mixture which gets the consistency of concrete in about five hours. We strip the patterns out so now you have a negative shape within this mold. We take it to a glass factory. The glass is cast or poured stream fed into these molds. It's cooled for two and a half months. 
when it comes out of these big ovens, we take the glass out of the sand and uh, bring it back to the studio. And then when it comes to the studio, it's sandblasted, cut. Uh, if they're fit to bronze or to, or to granite, we make those shapes um, as patterns for the bronze foundry or drawings for the granite yard. Then we will mate them to the glass, get everything to fit just right. I might be applying gold leaf or lead or silver leaf or patinating the bronze or rubbing color into something, but all those other things until they're, until they're completed works. In seeing these creations become real, that's very satisfying to me. The work does have a life of its own. I want it to be, have a life that somehow is something more than I really knew. And that is really the mystery of making for me is that you want the sum to be greater than the parts. One of the things about making the work that I make is that I enjoy making them. I enjoy the, the, the part of seeing this idea become real and be out in the world, giving experience to people as people come to the, to the work. What my work will mean for someone seeing it in 50 years or 100 years, I really don't know. It's just been very lucky for me to have found something I'm passionate about.